Maggie. Hi, hello, and a very warm welcome to you. I'm Maggie, Head of Franchise Awards at the Creation Station. With me this evening are the lovely Sharon Keel, one of our local franchise owners, and Sarah Cressel, who's our Managing Director and inspiration behind the Creation Station. Please feel free to ask any questions as we go along, and we'll aim to answer as many as we can. Any that we don't manage to answer, we will get back to you. And we do have information that we can send you afterwards. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Sarah Cressel. Sarah. Thank you, Maggie. It's lovely to have you here this evening and a huge warm welcome to you. Um, I firstly, I'd like to congratulate you for taking the time out to do something about creating your own future because life is a blank canvas and it's up to us to create that. And the question is, what, will you, what are you going to create with yours? And I can really empathise with that because back in 2002, when my three boys were, were tiny, um, I wanted something that was going to be flexible around my family and also would give me that, you know, that rewarding, satisfying career. Fast forward 17 years, we now have inspired over a million kids and adults. We support over a hundred fantastic. Sounds gone. Franchise owners. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry if we're having any problems with the sound here. Thanks, Sharon is our eyes and ears tonight. Um, so tonight, in the, next, in the next sort of hour or so, we're going to give you some insight into what it would be like to run your own successful, rewarding, In creative business. So I think we're having a bit of a, uh, is that, so I think the internet is jumping in and out, um, but we will continue anyway. So I'll hand you over to Maggie for what's in store for tonight, Maggie. Thanks, Sarah. So talking about this evening, we're going to try and cover uh, a, a little bit about um, why the Creation Station started uh, and what our values are, uh, why we're the UK's leading creative activity business, uh, an overview of the different income streams that, that you have available to you in your business. Uh, you will get to meet uh, and chat with the lovely Sharon Kill. We'll talk about our training and support, which we are very proud of. And then we'll talk a little bit about um, the financials, uh, the startup costs and the grant that's available. And then hopefully you'll be very interested in finding out more and we'll give you some contact details at the end. So without further ado, Sarah. Thanks, Maggie. Um, for me, I think ha real happiness and fulfillment comes from having a choice. Um, and certainly when I, I've got background in, in catering management and I was a designer maker and used to run creative workshops. Um, and when I was fortunate enough to become, to become a mum, you know, that we all have watershed periods in our life when we start to maybe review some of the things that we want, maybe some of the things that we want to change. So I wrote down my goals. They say 2% of successful people write down their goals. So this is what I wrote down. I wanted flexibility and control over my working day and my working hours. I wanted to, my own business that had the, had the potential to grow as and when I needed it to. And also to be able to step back as and when maybe family commitments demanded more of my time. I also wanted to generate good earning. You know, this wasn't going to be ever be a hobby business. This was about being able to contribute significantly to the family pot. I also wanted to provide um, I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to do something that was rewarding and fun. And I wanted to be able to wake up on a Monday and at the end of the day think, yeah, I, I did that. I created those smiles. I created that difference. And so that's certainly why I started the business all those years ago. But I, I'm really interested in finding out what's inspired you to think about changing your career or, or maybe taking a new path. So we're going to have a bit of fun. We've got a poll. Hopefully technology will work with us. Uh, we're going to load up a poll and we're going to ask you to find out what you are looking for. Yeah. So the poll will be coming up any moment. So Max, what questions are there in so this poll? So it's why are you looking to run your own business? Is it because you're looking for more flexibility and control over your working hours? Is it that you want to benefit from your own hard work? Or have you always wanted to run your own business? Or it may be all of the above. Ah, good question. And oh, the, this is exciting. The, the polls are in, the results are in. We have a really interesting mix. The answers are changing. Ah, um, it is, yes. 
And I think there is, oh, the results are in. We'll just close the poll. Thank you very much for all of you who um, who added a bit of excitement to the evening. Bet, we thank you, didn't bet. Um, I would have won. <laughs> Always, Maggie. Um, so the results are on the screen now. So as you can see, 60% of people um, said all of the above were important to you. Um, and that's quite typical, isn't it? It is really. I, mean, I talk to franchisees and potential franchisees, you know, every week. And it is all about, um, you know, it is about running your own business. It's about having that flexibility and control around your own personal commitments. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, it is about being the person uh, uh, and your family, being the people that benefit from your own hard work. And I guess being able to see the results of that hard work. So I am I'm satisfied because that's kind of what I thought. It is, it's true. Yeah. We've obviously got an excellent audience. Thank <laughs> you. you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so with that in mind, I would say that the big lesson that you want to really think about is what is it that you are looking for? Because if you know what you're after, you've got such a more greater chance of achieving it. Yeah. So amazing. if there's one thing that you can take away from tonight is mm. to be really clear on the vision and the goal that you want to achieve and the reason why you want to achieve that. Um, one of the things when we started the creation station and, even, and very strongly now is what our purpose, why did we start the creation station? Um, and it was to, obviously I wanted to flexibility as a mum myself. I wanted to nurture my own children's potential because although they went to lots of classes, we're all different and we want to bring out the uniqueness in each child and although we do art and craft classes it's never here's one we made earlier it's about sparking somebody's curiosity about inspiring their imagination and nurturing that amazing potential within each and every one of us and that's why we do what we do and that's where the greatest satisfaction out of all of the things that we do really comes from and, and we're very much underpinned by our core values they are Part of our culture they're part of our whole communication system and you can see just here that our core values are actually on the, on the training wall in the office here it, it ties us all together and it's where we can make the biggest difference um, because i think creativity can make a huge difference to so many people and of course when we started it was just children but now it's adults mindfulness crafting in the evenings we're working with the elderly we do intergenerational creative workshops as well and it's not just about art as I mentioned it's about unlocking all of those different ideas whether it be linking into STEM science technology engineering and maths whether it's about mindfulness it's about appreciation of other people's opinions creativity unlocks so much potential and I think that's one of the reasons why we are the leading brand in creative activities because it's so much more than just the sum of the parts it's about what we unlock, the potential within everyone that is unlocked through creative processes. But I'm going to stop there because I could talk about that for hours, as you can probably tell. Yes. Because, because of what, we've only got an hour, Sarah. Because of what we've done and our passion, we have become the UK's leading creative, <coughs> creative provider of activities. And with that, we've won an arm's length, in fact, a whole room full of awards. Out of, if you ever come to training, you'll see our our reception area is full of awards. Here's just a few of them. This is where we start to blush, but if I don't tell you, you'll never know. Um, we won the best uh, micro business for the British Franchise Association. One of our franchise owners won that. Recently, we've done, uh, we always do an independent survey of our franchise owners because their feedback is really important to us. In the last three years, we've had a five-star independent satisfaction rating from our franchise owners. We're members of the British Franchise Association. And in fact, I've now been elected to be on the board of the British Franchise Association. This is ensuring ethical franchising within the UK. We recently just got ranked as the top 15 out of all of the franchises in the UK, which is quite something. It's the, the top 100 franchises where they're number 15. Um, I really wanted to get to number one, but we're still working on it. We're still working on it. Um, because it's about being the best. I think if you're going to do something, you've got to be the best that you can in your field. And it's why I was very much involved and the team involved in setting up the Children's Activity Association. That's about giving parents peace of mind for standards within children's activities. And we've won many, many other awards. One of the things I was very fortunate to be involved in was in the team was the Richard Branson's um, Award for Positive Impact on Society. Out of 5,000 companies, we came in the top three. And that's 
evidencing the positive impact that creative activities have on all areas of the community and on all people. And we have lots more uh, recognition and value. And we, we've been winning awards for a long, long time. Uh, and what's nice now, you know, social social uh, reviews, so important now when you run a business and all of our franchise owners get the benefit of having um, all of those reviews for their own business. So we're rated five star on Trustpilot. Um, that's a public reviewing um, platform. Not that I'm biased, but my, my favourite has to be last year's award where we won best franchise of the year from working mums. Just saying. The lovely working <laughs> mums. Oh, yes. Um, and best support. Oh, we did. But, I wasn't for the gonna, franchising network. I know. But, I wasn't going to mention that. No, one. but you just <laughs> <laughs> might as well. So it is about doing the best that we can. We're not complacent. We listen to our franchises. They have fantastic ideas. Um, when they've just recently come into the business um, or they've been with us eight, nine, ten years, everyone has something to contribute. And it's just great to be part of something much bigger that is committed to making mm. a difference. Um, yeah. With that, I did write a book um got it it zoomed to amazon on number one um and it's about really about how creativity helped me as a child as a parent as a business owner um and certainly there's loads of ideas in here to inspire you there's 52 ideas in here to inspire your own kids and yourself um so again it's just putting creativity on the map that's what we're passionate about if you'd like a copy of the book uh, we'll do a special offer it's 9.99 uh, we'll do an offer at five pound um, at the end, if you just quote working mums and we'll send you the information to be able to get a special deal on my book. It took me two and a half years to write as well. So, and if you ask really nicely, would you sign it, Sarah? A signed coffee? Yeah, I, it, yeah, I will do. <laughs> my best handwriting. Um, so moving on, the website is uh, probably the, in fact, we won a, a, an award for the best franchise website because it's all about giving our customers a really great journey, a really great experience. We call it the creation station sensation. You know, we make it really easy for them to be able to book your classes, your parties, your events, and to get to know, know like, and trust you. It's really part of our uh, message. Um, and the, it's not just a website, it's an online booking system. So people can click and I, in three clicks, I can book one of Shan's classes, which is great. Um, and some of our team have actually gone to many of Shan's classes as well. Um, <laughs> but, as, but as well as the customer experience, for us, it's very much about providing our franchise owners with a great experience. Every franchise owner has their own, say again? I said it was a game changer for us as franchisees. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. everyone has their own microsite with a comprehensive business management system which might sound complicated, but just keeps it really easy. So everything's in, in the one place. So you get your registers, your money coming in and how it works. And it just saves, as Sharon's just said, loads of admin time. Because I hate, I hate admin. And I'd much rather be something more fun than just doing admin. Um, and over the years, we have developed our whole income streams. And I'll just pass you over to Maggie to, just to touch on the income streams that we have in our Thank business you, now. Thank you. So, uh, as Sarah said, our business has developed so much in the last few years um, and still so much more for us to, to do and then to really make a difference. But uh, in terms of the franchise opportunity, there are nine income streams. Um, the beauty of these is, is that they're all really flexible. Um, they, they run at different times. Um, uh, and sometimes in the school holidays, sometimes evenings, weekends, uh, during the week when your children are at school. So dependent on your own personal circumstances, you can fit in the income streams around your childcare uh, and your commitment. So we have uh, um, parties, classes and events. Your classes all run from 0 to 99 years and they can be for uh, um, mums with newborns, parents and carers with newborns, uh, right up to the elderly. Um, so right up to sort of 99 years uh, and you can really make a difference in your own local community. Uh, parties and events, um, the events is definitely a, a massive income stream in terms of your business and you'll probably know from your own area that there's lots and lots and lots of events now, uh, family festivals, car shows, air shows, kite festivals, uh, music festivals, festivals, shopping malls, there is so much now in the way of event entertainment and where you can get out into your own community and really make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. From a single idea, 
you know so many um, seeds and ideas yeah through. and actually yeah. a lot of our franchise owners have contributed to the ideas yeah. and customers as well to the way the business has grown which has been really positive and um, we work in partnership with loads of fantastic brands in fact we're running cbb workshops um up and coming um we work with we've worked with lego we do a lot with play-doh um because as the market leader great companies want to work with us um, and that means we can provide our customers with really different engaging activities mm. we've got some exciting new developments coming out this year but i can't tell you because it's a secret um <laughs> but there is always as sharon will lay testament to it, there's always stuff happening we are a very dynamic innovative company which is great because we are creative and uh, it keeps there's just a lot of ways we can inspire people and help franchise owners grow their own business at the, the rate that they want to and on that note I would love to introduce you to the one and only amazing Sharon Curl, who runs our franchise in Exminster. Good evening, Sharon. Hello, nice to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us your story. Right, so I bought my franchise ooh, just over two and a half years ago now. Um, my background is in the NHS and then teaching. So I was a primary school teacher. Um, I've got three children of my own, kind of varying ages. So I kind of reached that point a bit like Sarah's in that watershed period um, where I was exhausted, a little bit despondent. Um, I loved teaching, but I was finding that I wasn't able to sort of have that freedom to be creative and spend time with the children. And it wasn't, it just really wasn't going the way that I enjoyed. Um, I also found that I wasn't spending enough time with my own family. Um, so did a little bit of research. Um, I knew I wanted to do something that was allowing me to be creative. I wanted to do stuff that I could be with children. I also wanted something that would be flexible, um, that I could, you know, develop as and when my family needs um, changed, really. Um, came across the creation station um, and I thought, yeah, this looks good. So I um, spoke to Maggie went along to my discovery morning and it was one of those kind of moments where something just clicks. Um, I think for me, it was those values. When I saw those values, I'm like, that's everything that's important to me. That's everything that I want to, that I believe in, that I think is important. Um, so when you meet like-minded people, it's um, a bit of a light bulb moment, really. Um, when I spoke to sort of friends and families, I said, you know, this is the kind of thing that I want to do. They're like, oh, well, you know, you know, why are you buying a franchise? You could you could do that on your own. Just just set it up, do some classes. You know, you're a teacher, you can write plans and things. But I think what I had, I had no idea about running a business, which was scary. Um, I also, I don't know, I just I knew I couldn't do it on my own. When I came across the creation station, it's a, you know, it's a known business model. Um, I loved what it did. Um, when you look at those partnerships, Things like the Play-Doh, um, the CBBs have just been amazing for us as franchise owners because it gives you so much more power um, in terms of your marketing, in terms of what you're offering to your customers. Um, it's just been brilliant and I couldn't have done that on my own. So that kind of power of all of us together was has been really important. Um, I also look at my business now and how it was when I first started is that quite different now and what's been brilliant is I've been able to change that to suit my family and how these needs have changed and I know going forward that I can change that again because I'm in control of it so I'm in control of knowing what I need to earn knowing what hours I want to work and you know if I need to take time off to go and watch my daughter's assembly I can I haven't got to answer to anyone else apart from myself so I needed that flexibility but I wanted it to be future proof so that I knew that I can make those changes and develop my business how I wanted to do it. And it's exactly what it's, it's done, really. Um, and, you know, I've got so many more plans for where I want it to go in the future. The support that you get is um, is incredible, really, from the minute you make that first phone call to your discovery morning, to your training, the support afterwards. Um, you know, you never feel alone. You know, I could go on our group at one o'clock in the morning and there'll always be someone to talk to. Whereas if you work on your own, you know, it's you and things going around in your brain. So it's been the best move that I've ever made. And um, yeah, I'm really excited for the future, really. And where, where we're going to go from here. When I first started, we had Baby Discover and Little Explorers. 
that was it. Bring it on, Sharon. We, we can yeah. give you a few ideas. <laughs> <laughs> right, a few pointers. <laughs> yes. Just don't ask me to come and help you run your classes. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Um, Sharon, absolutely. Thank you very much. And actually, we've just had a, a question. Unfortunately, I can't see who it's from. But one of the questions that have come in is, um, are, are these income streams all part of your franchise or are they separate franchises? Really good question. Okay, um, that's a good question. We have the two types of franchise. We have the standard and the enhanced. Um, and without getting com too complicated in the um, in the webinar tonight, um, you get all of the income streams apart from the school, the after school clubs and school workshops because we've identified from feedback from our franchise owners, not everybody wanted to run the school club programs. So other than that, yes, everything else is included. The classes, tiny treasures, preschools, etc. Uh, events, adults, elderly, intergenerational workshops, which is really a party, a, a really great <laughs> yeah. part of our business now parties. So um, apart from the schools, which will, which is the enhanced, which we will touch on um, at the end as well. Hope that answers your question and i'm sorry I, we don't have your name marvelous but great feel free to keep asking questions sharon <clears throat> fabulous uh, was there anything else you wanted to add in or i don't think so i don't know if anyone's got any questions but feel free so if you'd like to ask sharon a question uh, let us know and we will continue with this exciting webinar we've never done a webinar before like this <laughs> we are very <laughs> thrilled and privileged to have some time with you like this so we're going to touch on the training and support um, you receive when you invest in a franchise. Um, and we have won uh, a lot of awards for our uh, training. We won one back in 2012 for the support. And uh, the runner-up was McDonald's at the time. Um, and recently we've won further awards, uh, most recently at the Working Moms, which we're very grateful for, um, for, that, for that recognition. Um, and this next image might blow your mind because it is a bit, a little bit of the type of support that we offer. Um, I'm not going to go through all. We cover a lot of this stuff uh, on a discovery chat. If you have a discovery chat with Mags and also if you really want to find out more at a discovery event, we go through all of the different support. And we do. But in, in a nutshell, uh, in a glittery nutshell, um, in essence, you have a, a comprehensive five day training here in Creative Hub, which is in, in the heart of Devon. Um, and you have, you leave training with a tailored six month plan of how you're gonna run and grow your business. Because you will develop your business different to other people because your family commitments, or if you don't have a family, your personal commitment your, and your personal ambition and goals may well be different to somebody else. So it's very much about how you wanna run your business. So every bit of training is tailored to you and because areas are exclusive, we're very non-competitive. In fact, quite the opposite. We're incredibly supportive with each other. Very. Choose your own path and we're there to help you. And sometimes you have to pull back and we'll be there to help you as well. Other types of support, you get um, a one-to-one -one, business buddy. You have a regional support manager. You have regional meetings. You have regional meetups. So whichever part you are in the country, you'll be connecting with your neighbors. We also have our national conference. Um, but on a one-to-one, -one, there's a lot of individual support for you. Um, all of the resources, we have an amazing treasure trove with all the resources, um, required data protection, health and safety. If you want to take on staff, we can help you with payroll, contracts, etc. cetera. Um, we also have a huge amount of webinars and training. So it's not just initial training, it's ongoing training. Um, and it's very much about what you need at certain times in your business. So we've had people in year eight still come and access training because they're developing a different part of their business because it's our franchise owners are the center of their business. And we know we couldn't be successful without our franchise owners. Another thing that has grown probably in the last 18 months, actually, uh, with the rise of mainly Instagram is a whole wealth of different social media assets from videos, uh, the slime workshops and unicorns have just gone mad. Um, so we've created a lot of really professional photographs, imagery, videos, films. We've been on, um, we've been on the TV a lot. Um, but with all of these assets and all of the credibility, what it means is if when you leave training, you can say when I was when we were at the kids' zone for the Olympics, when we were on CBBS, when we were on the BBC, you can own all of those assets. And you can never do something like that 
if you start up by yourself. You have instant credibility. I always say with a Costa coffee, the first person who makes a Costa coffee, then it's not just their first coffee, they're part of Costa. And it's a bit like creation station, your first birthday party. It might be your first first birthday party, but creation station have delivered over 100,000 birthday parties and each one's been unique. So you're part of all of that credibility straight away. I remember we had one lady at training who got 32 inquiries when we put her website live during training. So there are people waiting for new areas to emerge and we are looking for the right person to really connect with their audience and, and make a difference within that local community. Absolutely. Oh, it makes me feel quite emotional actually, because it, <laughs> it is about making a difference. Um, so Maggie, I'm going to ask you, could you give us, I'm sure people would like to know about the financials, how it co what it costs and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's cost good. Thank you, Max. So the franchise packages start at £7,999 plus VAT. This includes your five days initial comprehensive training. It does exclude your travel and accommodation, but the training is comprehensive. It covers every aspect of running uh, your business that you need. Uh, and it, you'll feel more than confident when you leave. So you know exactly, you have a clear plan in place of, of what you're gonna be doing and how you're gonna grow your business at a pace that suits you. Included within that initial franchise price, is £3,000 worth of startup kit and products. So that'll help you get started as well. There are two types of franchise available, as Sarah mentioned earlier. So the standard franchise essentially gives you the license to run Tiny Treasures, Baby Discover, Little... Sounds gone. Explorer, Family Fun, Birthday Parties, oh. Family Fun. Oh, could you hear there? us now, Sharon? Yeah. Can you hear us? Yeah, so, sorry, I'll start again <laughs> with that. So the standard franchise essentially would grant you the license to run Tiny Treasures, uh, Baby Discover, Little Explorer, Family Fun, Birthday Parties, Events, uh, Care and Creativity, Creative Crafters, and your retail. So all of those income streams, I say, come under the standard franchise. The other option is the enhanced option, and that includes everything that I've just mentioned, but it also includes what Sarah mentioned earlier, which is your Create Club with your school workshops. So I'm um, happy to have a chat with you in greater depth once you've had the information pack um, and, and explain a bit further in terms of the slight differences between the packages. Um, and in terms of funding, we have uh, great links with NatWest and RBS. So if you're thinking about uh, a funding and it is something that you do need to think about um, please do let us know if it is a business loan that you're looking at we can help with a business plan um, yeah. and with a forecast tool yeah um, there are ongoing costs dependent on which package that you choose uh, the monthly license fee starts at 150 pounds plus that fantastic and that's we can't provide the support and the the forward planning and the the really want to one to help you grow your business to where you want to without that mm. ongoing cost because we do invest significantly in our business. Um, if you come to the screen event, I'll tell you how much the uh, website actually cost us. I yeah. would. Um, Sharon, yes, can I help? I just wanted to mention, um, obviously you're talking about the monthly costs. I'm sure if you had to go and pay someone to develop your website and maintain it, it will cost you way more than that. And it's the biggest lifesaver because I would not have a clue so the fact that's all done for you and when something, you know, if something goes wrong, you ring into head office and they fix it is, well, it's worth every penny on its own. Yes, the whole booking system, your assets, your your videos, your all of the resources, yeah. um, session plans are all done for you. You can add your own flair if you'd like to, uh, but there are, how many session plans do you think we've got, Sharon? Is it in the thousands? I would have thought so. It's got to be heading that way. It is thousands. Um, whether it's a new royal baby coming or whether it was slime or unicorns or whatever the next trend is, we're right at the front of it, making those engaging workshops happen. Uh, hi, um, Sharon, is it OK? I've got a, a question for you from Christina. So yeah. Christina would like to know how many hours a day do you work? Oh, well, <laughs> my week varies. So in terms of actual classes, Christina, um, over my week, I run two Little Explorer classes and three Create Clubs um, because that's what I wanted in terms of fitting with my family. I then do um, a range of monthly sessions. So I might do a Tiny Treasures um, special. 
Um, it depends if I've got birthday parties coming in, but I look at my, I've got my big wall planner, which is above me, and I look at what I want to prioritise um, and how I feel that with classes. I set aside normally a Friday morning. I do all my prep for the following week, so I know I've got my weekend with my family. Um, so it's really up to you. I mean, you could be doing all day every day, or you could just do a few hours each day. Um, you do need to be quite disciplined in terms of your hours. So, you know, the head office work with you to set out your weekly plan, um, prioritising your family or, what, your, you know, whatever is important for you, um, because that's what we're all about is being flexible. Um, so it really varies, Christina, to be honest with you, but um, I do quite a few hours because that's what I choose to do. You do have to set aside time for your admin. Um, marketing is big. But quite often I'll just sit for half an hour in the evening with my iPad, um, which is way less than I did when I was teaching. Um, so, it, yeah, I'm not sure that helps because it's really varied and it's very personal to you. But I would say you can control your hours. Um, I like to do most of my work in school hours um, because that's what fits with my family at the moment. I'm sure as they get a bit older, I'll have um, more freedom. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. We've got, I thought I was going to say I thought it might be interesting to get uh, to do a quick poll on to as to what qualities you might feel a successful franchise owner might need. So we're going to just do this poll. Um, I'm just going to come on come onto the screen because obviously you've just heard from Sharon. Um, often, sometimes people think you need to have uh, experience of running a business. Um, or sometimes people think you, because we do work with kids and teachers, um, well, we nurture creativity. Sometimes people think you have to have a teaching background. Um, and there's another question up there. Um, do you have to be hardworking, proactive and friendly uh, and a people person in order to run a successful franchise owner, to, to run a successful franchise? So um, if you'd like to just let us know what you think the qualities are of our most successful franchise owners, just to see what you think and the results are coming in oh look at that that's fantastic and um, we're going to close that poll and put the screen i put the results on the screen and that is a lovely testament to the to the to the yeah, people yeah. we have on tonight um 95 of you believe you it's about hard work being proactive being friendly and the people person and um, so right and thank you for those who express that you have to have experience of working with kids or teaching and um, you actually don't need to you have to like kids i think that's a really important part <laughs> of our business um, <laughs> people, you really need to like people exactly and you need to be able to cope with a little bit of glitter and a lot of working on biodegradable glitter as well um but absolutely <clears throat> it's those people skills that really are the successful ingredients within our successful franchise owners yeah without a doubt without a doubt um and we do have, we've got exciting news about a grant, but we're going to come back to that in a minute because a few of you have asked a few questions. So we have a question from uh, Safar. When, when, well, come back to that one in a minute, if you don't mind, Safar, it's about the next steps. Um, ah, Lucy. Hello, hello Lucy. Lucy. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm, I'm going to pass this question on to Sharon, if that's OK. Sharon, uh, Lucy's asking, uh, I have seen that many of the franchise owners have school aged children. My little boy is just 18 months. Do you think it's possible to fit running a franchise while still spending time with him? Absolutely. Yep. We have people in the franchise network that are pregnant, have just had tiny babies, have got children of all ages, don't have children. Um, I think the bonus of this business is the fact that you can completely sorry I've got an echo that's why I'm stuttering <laughs> <laughs> you can completely fun. tailor it to suit yourself um, so there's people that have got children exactly the same age as yours some of them take them to classes with them um, some of them set aside maybe a morning or two where someone will look after them and that's when they go and run their classes They'll do their admin when their partner or in the evening when they've got time to themselves. You can completely tailor it to suit you. And as your little one grows or if you, you know, you never know, you might go and have more children, you will completely tweak it to suit you. And that's what's what's brilliant about it, because you can rein it in or you can develop it as and when it suits you and your family. 
Thanks, Hi, Anne. <laughs> Lucy would also like to know approximately how much do you spend on materials a month? Well, when I first started, I wasn't very disciplined because I just loved buying lots of beautiful materials. Um, when you then look at your profits, you think, no, I have to rein it in a bit. Um, I don't actually spend a huge amount. I've built my stock up over the last few years. Um, I'm quite rigid with my, my planning. So I look at the sessions coming up. Um, my The amount that I pay in each month towards my um, store credit, which we pay into, I, I make that work. So I know what I've got a set amount going out each month and I keep my resources with, within that. Um, I try not to go outside of that, if I'm honest. So if you can be quite disciplined, I know there's some in the network that like to buy lots of fancy tools and things, um, which is brilliant because that's, you know, if that's what's what you love doing and you can afford to do, that's brilliant. Um, so now I'd say you can stick within a budget. Um, when you come to training, you'll get to see how each class breaks down in terms of what it costs you. So for a little explorer or for baby discover, um, and there's lots of tools to help you sort of plan and, and it's quite good to see it visually. So you can see how much you've got coming in, how much you're spending on materials. Um, so I couldn't give you an exact figure, but, um, where'd you buy your materials, Sharon? Well, the great thing is that at head office in Devon, we have the most enormous warehouse. Um, all the products we can buy through there, they're really um, competitive cost wise, um, which is great because they always shop around for the most competitive deals for us. And we know that they're health and safety tested. We know that we've got all the relevant data sheets, the cost sheets. So when our customers say, oh, you know, what about that paint? We can reassure them with the data that, you know, it is um, washable, it's completely non-toxic. So the advantage of having that franchise back backup is that you've got all that reassurance to give your customers. Thanks, Sharon. Thank I you. hope that's okay, Lucy, and I'm really looking forward to our Discover chat. Mm. <laughs> so, oh, Samantha, Samantha Lund, hello, how are you? Welcome. Um, Samantha would like to know roughly what income do you earn from the hours that you're doing? Sharon, sorry. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, we could say it very much depends. I mean, I could answer this. Mm. I don't think we need to necessarily. You may not want to share your personal income. <laughs> we could maybe give a range. Um, <laughs> um, but I think typically it depends on very much how many hours you put into the business. But our franchise owners earn from anywhere between 12,000 and you can earn up to 60,000. Um, if very because a lot of people uh, run it as a small business. Some people take on staff and scale. So it depends on your level of ambition. And it also depends um, if you have, like Lucy was saying, she wants to spend time with her 18 month old. She, Lucy's probably not gonna be driving the business really hard because she'll probably wanna prioritize time with a little one while they're little, because they do get big very quickly. Um, so it very much depends. Um, Sharon, I think maybe on a person, if you have a one-to-one -one chat with Lucy, sorry, um, with Samantha, um, but I think it's probably best not to share your own personal um, <laughs> tax returns or whatever. <laughs> uh, but it very much, it very I much think, depends on. on yeah. yeah, I think as well um, how we tend to work as a business and the support you get is about looking at your personal ambitions. So if you had a goal for how much you want to earn per month, um, we'll work with you to look at the best income streams to to bring in that amount of money because everyone's got different. Obviously, you can say, "Well, I just want to earn loads." Um, we all do, um, but thinking about what do you need um, for your circumstance at the moment, and then we can work backwards from that um, to work out the best ways for you to make that. So it is very much a personal journey. Brilliant. We have a, a lovely question from Nisha. Hi, Nisha. Um, are the classes planned for you? Um, yes. <laughs> In a nutshell. <laughs> very detailed, <laughs> very structured. Um, anywhere in the country, our creation station franchises will be running to the same format as well. You can add your own flair, but we have thousands of session plans and really easy and accessible with all of the imagery that you need to help market and promote those classes. Um, but great question, Nisha. Thank you very much. Kirsty, Kirsty Penny Cardwood. Hello, how are you? Haven't uh, spoken to you for quite some time. I do hope you and yours are keeping well. Have you just got all your friends on here, Maggie? <laughs> No, no. I, I know Kirsty inquired, yeah. didn't she? she about the Kirsty came to Discovery event. Yes, right. Oh, that, yes. Hello, Kirsty. <laughs> nice to see you. So 
So um, in, in terms of your question, how long did it take to start um, receiving a sustainable income from the business? I guess I can answer that probably um, over and above Sharon, really, because as Sharon mentioned, in terms of the hours that she commits to the business, everybody's different in terms of the time that they commit to the business. Um, and of course, it, it, it depends then on how many parties, events you do, how many classes do, etc., and how you drive your business. Um, what I can say is that we have had people that have got their initial investment back in five and a half months, some in nine months. I would say in reality, the average is about 18 months. Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question. But it'd be good to have a chat with you and catch up. And actually, uh, uh, I think it's Wei Jun I also asked about how long it would take to break even. And we typically say anywhere between, we'd say 18 months. Yeah. A lot of people have done it before that as well. Yeah. But you have to think about what you're going to live on, like with any business, while you scale and grow your business. Um, some other, oh, I'm liking these questions. Another question from Emma. Emma Penny, hiya. Um, can two people run one franchise as a partnership? Um, absolutely. Um, we have two sisters running it. Um, and we have a, a couple running their own franchise. Um, people often talk to us about running it with a friend. That is possible. Um, so there are lots of options for that. Um, so best thing to do is have a chat, uh, have a chat with Maggie and myself, come on to a discovery event and we'll talk it through. Um, but yes, in essence, Emma, thank you for that question. Other questions from Laura. Laura. Hi, Sharon, do you find that the classes at your franchise is very diff different from school classes. I'm a secondary school teacher and wonder how different the lessons would be. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, that's a good question, Laura. Um, I think it very much depends um, on the age group in terms of what classes, also a little explorer class, a preschool, sort of toddler classes are very different. If you're talking about in terms of um, after school clubs or workshops we do in school, um, I'd say they're more fun. Um, you get to be creative. <laughs> um, you get to really enjoy that time with the children. Um, so you take them on that creative journey. But the great thing at the end of it is you don't have to mark it. You don't have to track it. Um, you actually get to see them as that child rather than the number on a screen. Um, they do have structure. Um, they do have an objective to um, achieve at the end. But children aren't measured against that. That's more for you. So, you know, what are you going to um, develop over this session? Um, so we've got a lot of credibility when we go into schools um, in terms of getting there. We do lots of workshops um, where we can go in and we can complement their to current topics, um, their current learning, or we can just go in and do so. We've done sessions where you go in at the end of term. So, you know, class X of one, you know, the special prize to have a slime workshop. Um, so we've got a lot of flexibility. Um, so if you still want to go in and do a far more structured session, you certainly can do that. Or we don't, you know, we don't have all those, red, you know, red tape and offset and things to um, to worry about. We get to do the nice things. So <laughs> I hope that answers it. <laughs> Thank you. Here's a question from Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. What if my area is already taken? Maggie. Ah, so that's a really great, great question, Sarah. Uh, sometimes you will find that there is uh, already a franchisee in your area. Now, it may be that they own the territory, but they're perhaps not currently running sessions in your area. However, as a franchisee, once you have bought the territory, that does become exclusively yours. Um, what I would say to you it, that there is quite often areas very close by um, that you certainly may find will work for you. So it's worth uh, getting in touch and, and having a chat because it is done on individual postcodes. So uh, please do get in touch and, and, and let me know which postcodes would be of interest uh, and we can have a chat and go from there. Hope that's OK, Sarah. Great. Great name, by the way. Um, there is a question down the bottom, I think, from Way. <clears throat> yes. Further down, I think I saw one that we didn't get to down the end. Yeah, I'm still just going through them. There's lots Lovely. of great questions. Um, so we've got we that one. That. Yeah, there's right. one further down, I think, underneath Laura's. Keep scrolling. Uh -huh. um, I'm... Oh, I thought I, I, I saw one from Way where it said, could you run it alongside a full time job? Oh, you can answer that I one. think I may or may not have, have seen that. I'm sure I saw it somewhere. Sounds but like a Wei, good question. Eh? Um, 
interestingly enough, um, you would you you wouldn't be able to run this alongside a full time job. Um, mm -hmm. This is is a business. People buy and invest in the business, and and of course they they want it to be successful. Um, and and whilst we, we we do have some people that work part time, certainly whilst they're building up their business, because we recognise that that it's quite a big jump to go from, uh, you know, a sort of regular full time income, um, and that it does take time to build your business. Uh, the, the reality is, is that you do have to commit uh, to the business in order to, to make it grow. So unfortunately, you, you wouldn't be able to run the franchise along, alongside a full time job. Hope that's OK. Yes. Great. Um, I'm just just reading. And some so of far, this. we haven't answered yet. Um, and the question is, can you say about that? the next training course? I do. Believe. Ah, yes, <laughs> there is a lot of que another question yeah. about. Uh, which I thought we could get onto in a moment. Yeah. Uh, we do have details of we have a, we did a grant a couple of you. We did a grant last year uh, really to help people start their own business, mm -hmm. and I think we gave away 30, a lot of money. We gave away a lot of money, uh, <laughs> and we decided to uh, launch it. This is the first time we've mentioned it for 2019, <laughs> um, and it is always done on a first come first serve basis. Um, the grant is basically up to. Two thousand pound towards the investment of your business. If it's something you're interested in, um, when you have a chat with Maggie, um, do ask about the grant, and then we'll check eligibility. We'll check whether you're able to get it, <laughs> um, and we'll take it from there. Um, <laughs> but it will be on a first come first serve basis. Uh, but it will go towards um, the investment within your business. Um, so this is uh, us at uh, a couple of years ago at our conference and. It's, it's great talking with you tonight. Uh, it feels very one sided and uh, much preferred chats and actually meeting you in person. Um, but we couldn't do we couldn't make the positive impact without our franchise owners. Mm -hmm. um, that is what the success of the creation station is all about, is helping people run the most successful business that they can and, and being part of that success. Um, it's one of the greatest things I feel about having established creation station and it's the thing that gives me the greatest joy part of my own family is seeing how the business has developed and when you hear franchise stories about how it's helped them and their own families and their kids get very much involved in the business as well um mm -hmm. is that's the success I think that's where the real magic of creation is is the caliber of the people uh, and the differences that we make and it is indeed mm. uh, so finding out more, Maggie, a couple of you said we did have a question about what are the next steps? When's the next training? So it, can it, you help us? I can. So in terms of, uh, of next steps, if you haven't already had an information pack, and I know that some of you have, and I've already spoken to some of you, and so we've already been to a discovery event. But if you haven't, and you're still at the stage of, of thinking about whether running a business, uh, whether it's the right fit for you, um, well, then and unless you investigate, you won't know, will you? So um, if you would like to find out more, just get in touch. Uh, we can send you uh, uh, an information pack, a franchise information pack. Then we can book in a chat and I'm happy to answer any bespoke questions that you may have that we haven't covered this evening. Um, and if after that chat, we both feel that it may be a fit, then um, we'd love to invite you to one of our discovery events. Uh, we run these bi-monthly all around the UK. Don't we run them every month, Maggie, the Discovery Oh, yes, yeah, you're we've right, got, we got, do. Got, Sorry, it's training this <laughs> bi-monthly. Sorry. So the Discovery events, they are once a month all around the country, always on Saturday mornings. So if you would like to come along, they do get booked up really fast. Um, there is a currently a waiting list for Saturday, but um, uh, there's always a, a few drop offs at the last minute due to illness. So if you would like to come along, please do get in touch with me tomorrow. Um, training is bi-monthly. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions we haven't covered? I'm just checking. Uh huh. Um, I've really enjoyed this level of interaction. I hope you found some. Uh, Caroline's got some, a question for Sharon. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, you can see why our business is all about creativity <laughs> and not about developing uh, tech IT systems. Uh -huh, uh, there we go. There you go. Can you read that one out, Mike? Yeah, it's a question for you, Sharon, from yeah. Caroline. How easy was it for you to break into doing after school club activities and how did you tackle this? Schools usually have their own after school provisions. So how did you get in? OK, um, I think I was reasonably fortunate um, that I managed to get quite a few um, after school create clubs. Um, a lot of it is through persistence. I think 
I agree with you. A lot of schools do run their after school clubs. Um, so it's about spending a bit of time researching the schools in your area, seeing what they offer. Quite often on their websites, they will um, they'll outline, they'll have their after school clubs up there ready for parents. So I think it's identifying um, a gap in that. I normally try and visit a school. Um, quite often it's hard to get um, to speak to head teachers. So maybe finding the um, a good point of contact, so maybe the arts coordinator, after school club coordinator, um, and trying to have a chat. We've got loads of resources for you to be able to take into schools to outline what we offer, the benefits of it. Um, and it's just about identifying the benefits and what we offer. I mean, it looks really great for a school um, when we're in there because, um, it, I mean, I've been in a school running after school clubs where Ofsted have come in. I'm not being offsetted, but they have commented, and I know other people have had this about, wow, what a great addition to your extracurricular activities. So that's a really good way of um, pushing that. Also, Arts Mark Awards, um, I often offer to collect evidence for them. So I've never actually been asked to do that, but the fact that, you know, I could take a few pictures, um, you know, teachers are busy. They don't always have the time to do that. So we've got lots of kind of top tips of ways to get into schools. Um, Sometimes it takes a lot of knocking on doors, um, but our business is all about um, people skills and um, being friendly, making friends with the right people, using who you already know. So it might be the, um, the Parent Teacher Association. Quite often you can offer, I mean, I've offered to go along and um, offer a prize for a draw. I've offered um, to go yeah. in and might do some. Yep. Sorry, Sharon, that's great. And uh, I'm just very conscious of time. We've got a few other questions. and. Um, okay. I think, you, yes, it is perseverance. But the other yeah. thing about this, Caroline, is we cover a lot of this in training as well. Yeah. Um, and we have a group, uh, all of our franchisees who are doing uh, Crit Club also share their tips uh, on how they've got into schools. And, and we have a number of ways to help you with that. Um, but it is possible. Um, and as Sharon described, there are lots and lots of different ways and techniques. Uh, but a really good point. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, and we have Danae. Danae, um, what if I'd like to bring my own practice in my own practice as an artist? Um, is there a possibility to adjust my previous experience and skills within the franchise? Um, great question. We have a, a fantastic artist at the moment, Mark, who um, is very much involved in running very is, is very successful franchise. Um, yes, there is. Um, we have a, a framework and um, and a, boundaries I guess the way we run our business from a health and safety point of view it's very important we have standards within the business but um absolutely we have as many of our franchise owners are creative some of them say they haven't got a creative bone in their body um but they are very good at implementing the systems and delivering fantastic experiences so um yes it's probably something that you probably want to have a chat with Maggie about or with me just to see what type of things you're thinking to bring in and we'll be really honest with you um but if you're artistic, I'm sure that would be that would be a bonus within running your business, as it is with Mark and many of our other franchise owners. And I think there was another one. How long after training can you be up and running? Vicky, thank you very much for your question. <clears throat> um, we have many people who leave training and run within a week. Um, some people, if we get a birthday party inquiry um, and it's in your area, you can be up and running and do the birthday party on the Saturday if you wanted to. Um, <laughs> the, the emphasis soon. on the if you want to, yes. because <laughs> it is entirely about how comfortable yeah. and confident that you feel. Um, we have had, actually, we have had people um, that, that have done events on the Saturday when they finished training on the Friday afternoon. Yes. Um, but it's entirely, the, the whole of this, this business is done at a pay. Sounds pace gone. That suits you, because we know that um, and we know that everybody is individual and everybody learns at, at different rates and wants to grow their business at different rates. So it's all about what you feel comfortable with, Vicky. Absolutely. Um, got a lovely question from Laura. Thank you. Are you able to move a franchise? Um, do you, if you mean by this, are you able to, if you relocate, uh, are you able to move the franchise? Um, it's when we have a franchise owner within our family, um, we will do everything to support you. Uh, whatever that takes to be honest so we won't have a move house though we won't have to move house. <laughs> um, but if you relocated um i guess local franchise owners probably would help um, but if you relocated and that area was available 
we would help you relocate because you're our you're our biggest priority um so if that area is available yes we would help you relocate without a doubt um yes are you able to um and vicky um how many of your franchise owners employ staff um oh gosh probably around about 20 25 percent mm. uh, it depends sometimes it's much more than that sometimes it's far more than that um but it very much depends um how people want to scale a business um some people run classes with staff some people run in fact it's probably more than 25 percent yeah um, it just very much depends um because the franchise is about you the, the model is about you and it's not one size fits all hopefully no. that's coming very much across uh, in tonight um if you wanted to take on staff we have we've had some people who had six staff and ran many many workshops and clubs etc um but some people have run a business just with themselves doing it and um, so very much depends on what your own goals and ambitions are yeah, it, but, but we'll help you with whatever yeah. it is that you want to create in your business essentially the bottom line of all of this is that this business gives you the flexibility you're the one that's in control you decide what income streams you do when you do them how big or how small you grow the business how much income you want to generate um the time that you commit to it so that's the beauty of it um and there are certain situations when you um, will, will have, like Sharon's mentioned, have specific goals and you really want to put your foot down on, on the gas, as it were, yeah. and, and sort of, you know, drive your business ahead. There are other times when things might happen at home that you need to take your foot off the gas and slow down a bit. And, and because it's your business, you can do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Sorry. That's just... <laughs> if you want to have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> a few extra minutes on the clock if you book a discovery <laughs> chat. Um, thank you so much. I really enjoyed the questions. Um, thank you, Sharon, for just al always being epic. Uh, Maggie, uh, for just being Maggie. Uh, I'd like to give a big thanks to um, the the Working Mums uh, team who have really awesome. helped, who have really helped us um, yeah. do our first live webinar. And uh, thank you for that. And also. Uh, Fran, our IT manager, who is in the background for any emergency technical hitches we may have had, but we pulled through. Um, but greatly, a thanks to you. Um, mm. And I would say, whatever you decide to do in your future, I just wish you all of the best uh, and unleash the superhero within yourself. Take care and thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye.